trigonometry, section 1.4, using the definitions of the six trigonometric functions. So, now that we've defined these, how can we use them? Well, first of all, we're going to see how to write these a little bit differently. There are three kinds of equations. There are identities. There are conditional equations. And there are contradictions. <coughs> Identities, it doesn't matter what you put in for the variable, they are always true. Conditional equations are true if you put the right thing in for the variable. So they are sometimes true. And contradictions are, of course, never true. No matter what you put in for the variable, you won't get a true statement. It's a contradiction. Now, what are the examples for these? Oh, I guess you can have a bunch of different examples. Um, some algebraic ones, x equals x, that's always true, x equals x. Um, 2x equals 4, that's true if we put in a 2 for x, but not true if you put in a 3 or anything else. Um, x equals x plus 1 is never true, no matter what you put in, 9 doesn't equal 10. And so one way to work on some of these is certainly to solve this, but what we need to do is notice that there are some identities are pretty obvious, but trigonometric identities are not always that obvious. In fact, both sides of the equation can look like they're completely different, but it is an identity. So in trigonometry, we have to memorize the identities. Here's our first several identities. The reciprocal identities, you might have noticed this, the sine theta, the cosine theta, and the tangent theta. And we'll usually stick with these three because if you notice the sine theta, whose definition, which is y over r, you also might notice that the cosecant's definition is r over y, and these are reciprocals of each other. So how do we get the sine and the cosecant to look exactly the same? Well, we have to flip it over, and the way to do that is take the reciprocal. So the sine of theta is always going to be equal to no matter what you put in for theta, what angle you use, 1 over the cosecant. Since the cosine of theta is x over r, and the secant of theta is equal to r over x, the same thing applies. The cosine, to make it equal, you want the reciprocal of the secant. And the tangent, which is y over x, and the cotangent, which is x over y, these two will make the most sense, tangent, cotangent. So this is 1 over the cotangent of theta. Now, this is how we memorize these reciprocal identities, and this is how I will test you on them to see if you remember them, and there'll be a quiz uh, tomorrow on the, the identities that we learned. So this is the way we learn them, but you've got to realize that there's not just one way to look at these, not just one way to, to work with these. If the sine of theta is equal to the one to one over the cosecant of theta, and we multiply both sides by cosecant theta, then the sine of theta times the cosecant of theta would equal one. 
We can also divide both sides by the sine of theta and say that the cosecant of theta is equal to 1 over the sine of theta. There's several ways we can write this identity, but it's really sort of based on this idea, the reciprocal identities. These three sort of common sine, cosine, tangent, we're going to use those an awful lot because we can change those into the others by using these reciprocal identities. Notice, though, the sine and the cosine aren't reciprocals. They are cofunctions. The tangent and the cotangent are reciprocals. They're also cofunctions. We'll talk about that later. So these are the first identities we'll learn, and there are going to be some more. The next identities we're going to learn, Pythagorean identities. Now, we know that the unit circle, it has an equation of x squared plus y squared equals 1. Right? Well, if you didn't know that, that's true. Now, if x squared plus y squared equals 1, and we know that the sine of theta is y over r, and the cosine of theta is x over r, what is the sine squared of theta? In other words, the sine of theta squared. Well, that's y squared over r squared. And the cosine squared of theta is x squared over r squared. So if we plug these, if we write this as sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, we can get, without the other side yet, we can get y squared over r squared plus x squared over r squared, and that equals. Well, we know that x squared and y squared are just one, so let's work on this left side a little bit. So we've got a common denominator. Let's write this as x squared plus y squared instead of the other way. Over the common denominator, r squared. Now, if if we know that this is 1, then what must be on the right side? Well, 1 over r squared has got to be on the right side also. 1 over r squared. But hold it. What is r in the unit circle? r is a radius of 1. So this is just 1 equals 1. This is an identity. So what are the Pythagorean identities? Well, the way I'm going to ask them is something plus something equals 1. And then 1 plus something equals something else. And something plus 1 equals something else also. The first one is going to be this thing. Since r squared is 1, this is just going to be a 1 on the right side. So your answer for this is, and because it's addition, doesn't matter the order, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. It's got to be sine squared and cosine squared, not just sine and cosine. Now, if you take that and you say, okay, okay, so I know that one's true. Sine squared theta, cosine squared theta equals 1. Well, let me divide everybody by sine squared theta. Well, sine squared theta over sine squared theta is 1. Cosine squared over sine squared theta, we haven't talked about that yet. 1 over sine squared we have because 1 over sine theta squared is cosecant squared. But remember, cosine squared is x squared over r squared, and sine squared is y squared over r squared. Let's invert and multiply that. Let's see. x squared over r squared multiply by the reciprocal r squared over y squared. When the r squareds cancel, we get x squared over y squared, but that's really just x over y squared. 
what, what trig function is x over y? That's the cotangent squared. So 1 plus the cotangent squared theta plus cosecant squared theta. That goes in the next one. So 1 plus the cotangent squared theta is the cosecant squared theta. Now, if you use that same idea, and we divide by, let me use hot pink cosine squared instead of sine squared. Well, now we get a 1 here. Well, let's put it there. But then we get sine, so let's write this over here. So we get <laughs> sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. We get a 1 here, and this is 1 over cosine squared theta. And we can use that. 1 over cosine is, we just learned last, secant theta. It's got to be squared, though. Sine over cosine. Well, if we do the sine, which is y squared over x r squared, and that's over the cosine, which is x squared over r squared, Invert and multiply, the r squareds cancel, y squared over x squared, it's y over x quantity squared, is the tangent squared. So the tangent squared plus 1 is equal to the secant squared. That was a little messy, and I apologize for that. But you can go through that and take a look. So this is the tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. Now, we got to memorize this. These are the three that you memorize. But once again, we can rewrite this stuff a lot of different ways. Rearrange it. Use it the way we need to. But these are the ways we memorize them. This is the way I will quiz you on them. You're going to fill in sine squared and cosine squared, the cotangent squared, the cosecant squared, the tangent squared, and the secant squared. And you might say these second two, aren't they the same? We just switch the order here. True. You put cotangent squared there, you must put cosecant squared here. If you put cotangent squared here, you must put cosecant squared here. And then sort of vice versa. Tangent squared needs secant squared. Tangent squared needs secant squared. So yes, you can do that and switch those around. I don't worry about that because addition is commutative. Okay, let's continue trig 1.4, the last set of identities, the quotient identities. These we really saw in the last one. The tangent of an angle, the cotangent of an angle, there's only two of them here. This is what we saw with those squares, and perhaps I should have done this first. Since the tangent is um, sine over, I'm sorry, is y over x, that's what the tangent of theta is defined as. Well, we can write this as y divided by x, which is really y times 1 over x, or let's do that y over 1. Now, if we wanted to put in a different number besides 1 here, we could. But remember, that was just our radius, because this was the unit circle. y over r times r over x. It doesn't have to be in this case, because that unit circle could be any radius. That would cancel right? Oops, this is divided by. I'm sorry, but now it's times. Excuse me, excuse me. So this is really y over r divided by x over r. So now you've got y over r divided by x over r, which is the sine of that's its definition over the cosine. So the answer 
what you will fill in for the quotient identity for the tangent, it's the sine of theta, or the cosine of theta. Similarly, if we use this same argument, but with x over y instead of y over x, we can run through the same argument, and the cotangent of theta will be the cosine of theta over the sine of theta. So once again, you, I will give you this stuff in blue. You will fill in the stuff in red. So let's, these are the quotient IDs. Let's write down also the others so you remember those. The reciprocal IDs. The sine of theta is 1 over the cosecant of theta. The cosine of theta is 1 over the secant of theta. And the tangent of theta is 1 over the cotangent of theta. The Pythagorean identities, something plus something else is 1. 1 plus something equals something. Something plus one equals something else. And you get to fill in the sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. One plus tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta. And cotangent squared theta plus one equals cosecant squared theta. So this will be what will your quiz will sort of look like. It'll be a little different because it'll be on my LSMSA. But you'll be able to take that quiz. We're continuing section 1.4. It's important to understand what the plus and minus signs of the trig functions are in the different quadrants. Because every point in the first quadrant is positive and positive. And every point in the second quadrant is negative and positive, the signs. In the third quadrant, they're both negative. And the fourth quadrant, it's positive for the x and negative for the y. This tells you what the trig functions are. All of them are positive in the first quadrant. Now, the only ones positive in the second quadrant are the ones that just have y involved. Remember, r is always positive, so we don't need to worry about r. So if y is involved, then it's positive, but only y. If it's got x and y, then we've got negative, or just x and r. So all of them are positive here. The sine is positive here, along with the cosecant, because it's reciprocal. In the third quadrant, individually these are negative, but then together it's positive. So in this quadrant, the tangent is positive and the cotangent is positive because that uses both x and y. Everybody else is negative. And in this fourth quadrant, the cosine is positive and it's reciprocal, the secant. So sometimes uh, this you can use a phrase here. Anything sort of crazy is going to be helpful, but um, a mathematician would like to say that all seniors take Cal 4, Calc 4. So this is all positive. S for sine and its reciprocal cosecant. T, didn't make sure I spelled take right. T for tangent and its reciprocal cotangent. Calc 4, C for cosine and its reciprocal secant. So all seniors take Cal 4. Um, the ranges of the trig functions we can take a look at. The chapter 4 will be a better place to look at this. Um, if you look at the unit circle, that can help you understand what's going on. And it goes back to our x and y axis. Remember, r is always going to be um, the same for this. 
So as you start from this point, x is going to be at its highest. And then it's as this point moves around the circle, x will move down to 0. When it moves to this point over here, x will go big negative. Well, the biggest thing is going to be 1. And the biggest thing negative is a negative 1. y will start with 0 and go up to this as the point moves around, which is a positive 1. And then as it goes around to this point right here, it goes to a negative 1. So as x changes from 1 to negative 1, r is always the same. As y changes from 1 to negative 1, r is always the same. The signs range goes from a negative 1 to 1. This is interval notation with their square brackets. The cosines range goes also from a negative 1 to 1. That means the y values. The x values can be anything. The domain for both of those. All the real numbers can go in there. And that's pretty much all we'll look at in this chapter. We'll look more at that later. So here's some examples from section 1.4. So I think I'm on page 36. We're very close to that. Number 12. Directions use the appropriate reciprocal identity to find each function value. The function we're looking for is tangent theta. We are given The cotangent of theta is equal to negative 0 0.01. Well, the trig identity for reciprocal, because we know the tangent of theta is equal to 1 over the cotangent of theta. So this is 1 over negative 0 0.01. Let's write that as a negative, right? 1 over this is really 1 one hundredth, right? So 1 over 1 one hundredth is really invert and multiply 100. So the tangent of theta is a negative 100. It's the reciprocal of the cotangent. So number 30. Directions determine the signs of the trigonometric functions of an angle in standard position with the given measure. The measure they give us for number 30 is a negative 640 degrees. So we want the signs of the six trig functions in standard position. As soon as you start here and go around, let's see, that's 360. How much more do we need to go for negative 640, right? 14 minus 6 is 8. 5 minus 3 is 2. 280 degrees. Well, there's 90. There's 180. There's 270. 280 degrees. So it's in the first quadrant. 640, negative 640, is in the first quadrant. And the sign... This is where theta is, is positive. The cosine is positive. The tangent is positive. The secant is positive. The cosecant is positive. Oh, I forgot the cotangent is positive. They're all positive in the first quadrant. That's a way to get four steps. Number 42. Directions. Identify the quadrant of the angle theta that satisfies the given conditions. So for 42, the conditions are the tangent of theta is less than 0, and the cotangent of theta 
is less than zero. So where are the tangent and the cotangent negative? Well, everybody's positive here, right? Only the x is negative here, but that would make the cotangent and the tangent negative, right? Which is this. So this is a quadrant that works. Let's see if there's any others. Both of these are negative, so that means the x and the y would cancel those negatives and they'd be positive here. But the x is positive, the y is negative here because of the x and the y being how we define tangent and cotangent. y over x and cotangent is x over y. Where we have just one but not the other negative is where this is going to be the angle. So theta could be in quadrant two or quadrant four. Number 56. Directions decide whether each statement is possible or impossible for some angle theta. 56, they give us the cotangent of theta is equal to a negative 6. So, um, how do you find out if something's possible or impossible? Well, let's see here. The cotangent is also x over y, right? And x and y, is there any way to write, I guess, x and y as a negative 6? Well, yeah, x can be a negative 6 and y could be 1. Is that possible? Let's see, x, negative 6, and positive 1 for y. Yeah, there's a theta that's possible. Maybe we need to take a look at something that could be impossible. For cotangent, it's a little harder to see, but if we take a look at a point on the x-axis, let's say instead of a negative 6, 1, we just have a negative 6, 0. We figure out that that's where it is. Well, the x would be a negative 6, and the 0 would be the y, and that's undefined, so that's really not possible for a cotangent theta in that case to work. So, But cotangent can be a negative 6 because we can write that as a negative 6 over 1, and x and y can be those things. That's a different way than doing it. They say to see example four, but uh, we're going to do more of that when we look at the graphs, and that'll be a little more obvious. What about number 66? The directions use identities to solve each of the following. Number 66 is find the cotangent of theta given cosecant of theta equals a negative 2 and theta is in quadrant 3. So for a lot of this stuff, drawing a picture is going to be very useful. If theta is in quadrant 3, it's over here someplace. I always like to put the circle here too because it gives me a way to write this triangle. Okay, this is the x, this is the y, this is the r. The cosecant is r over y. So that's, now, r can, can't be negative. So we can write that as 2 over negative 1. y is a negative 1 and r is 2. That means we can find out what x is. 
because by the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus negative 1 squared equals 2 squared. Or x squared plus 1 equals 4, x squared equals 3, x equals square root of 3. But so uh, in the second quadrant, that's got to be negative. Negative square root of 3. So now that we know x, y, and r, they can ask us any of these. They ask for the cotangent. Let's change colors. So the co this is the theta. So the cotangent of theta, which is x over y, in our case is x, which is negative square root of 3 over y, negative 1. So this is just square root of 3. Number 78. Find the five remaining trig function values for each theta if the cosecant of theta is equal to negative 3 and the cosine of theta is greater than 0 or positive, right? Draw a picture. Where could this be? The cosecant is negative, so it won't be the first quadrant, it won't be the second, that's where the sign and the cosecant are positive. It could be the third or fourth, but hold it, the cosine is greater than zero, so it's not the third, that's when the cosine is less than zero. So it's in the fourth quadrant. Now, cosecant is r over y. So this is, now r can't be negative, so we'll make the y the negative, which makes sense. r is 3, y is a negative 1, and x we don't know yet. So x squared plus negative 1 squared equals 3 squared. x squared plus 1 equals 9. x squared equals 8. x is either plus or minus the square root of 8. Well, x is positive, so it's plus this time. And if we want to, we can write that as 2 times 4. The square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 2. So we're going to use that for x. 2 times the square root of 2. It says find the other 5. So let's just write them all down. The sine of theta is y. Remember what y is, I guess. Let's write this. x is 2 squared to 2. y is a negative 1. And r is 3. Sine is y over r, negative 1 over 3. Cosine is x over r, 2 square root of 2 over 3. Tangent is y over x, negative 1 over 2 square root of 2. It does say in the directions also, rationalize denominators. So we're going to have to multiply both numerator and denominator by the square root of 2 to get rid of that irrational part. So this becomes a negative square root of 2 over, well this becomes a 4, because that becomes a 2 and there's already 2 there. So the cosecant, remember we can use reciprocals, reciprocal of the sign. It's a negative. The secant is a reciprocal of the cosine. That's 3 over 2 square root of 2. But let's multiply by the square root of 2. And we get 3 times the square root of 2 over 4. And the cotangent, the reciprocal of the tangent, I'm going to use this one because then I have to rationalize that one. So it's really 2 square root of 2 over that negative 1. So once you've got this picture, you've got all six. Number 92. The directions. Suppose that theta is between 90 and 180. So 90 degrees is less than theta. It's less than 180 degrees. Suppose. One way to write that in mathematics is an S. Looks like with a P down here. Suppose. Pretty cool. Uh, the secant of the negative theta 
They want to know, find the sine of each function. Hmm, is it positive or negative? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Draw a picture. Here's the bullseye that I always use. Theta is between 90 and 180, second quadrant. Now, that means really theta goes from the initial side to that terminal side. And a negative theta would be in the third quadrant. This is a negative theta. So you would wind up in the third quadrant. What is the secant in the third quadrant, positive or negative? Well, only the tangent and the cotangent are positive here. The secant is negative. And the last one we'll do in this section, number 104. Find the value of each variable. And we're given the secant of 2 theta plus 6 degrees times the cosine of 5 theta plus 3 degrees equals 1. Hmm. Which trig identity could help me with this? Well, if I divide both sides by the secant of this 2 theta plus 6 degrees, I would get the reciprocal identity. What does the reciprocal identity mean? It doesn't matter what I put in, just that they're the same for each of these. They're exactly going to be an identity. These are equal. So we know that 5 theta plus 3 degrees has to equal 2 theta plus 6 degrees. Because for that to work, remember this is cosine theta equals 1 over secant theta, or alpha, or beta, or any angle you'd like. Subtract 2 theta from both sides. We get 3 theta. Subtract 3 degrees from both sides, we get 3 degrees. Divide both sides by 3, theta must be 1 degree. Pretty cool. You should be able to do all of the Chapter 1 review exercises. Make sure you label them correctly, and make sure you send them to me when you get them done so I can grade them.